You are listening to the voice of TK Coleman, and this is TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about the devil's most powerful lie. Dun, 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 dun. Let's go to tweet number one. The devil's most powerful lie is the one that convinces us that temptation is more beautiful and rewarding than the very life it robs us from having. All right, let's define our terms here. What is temptation? Temptation is an alluring or attractive opportunity to sin. Uh-oh, I use the sin word. That's like one of the most hated words nowadays, but let's define sin. Sin is a term which in the Bible means to miss the mark. So the concept of sin implies that there is a goal or there is a purpose. There is a reason for why we're here and why we do things. And sin is anything that misses that mark, okay? And so the difference between sin and temptation is this, is sin is any activity that misses the mark in relation to some goal. Temptation is any attractive opportunity to do it. So just because something might be a sin doesn't mean that it's a temptation for you because we all have different weaknesses. We all have different vices that we will find tempting. So what's tempting to you may not be tempting to me. What's tempting to me may not be tempting to you. But here's the thing. When we think about sin, it can be very easy to stereotype that word and get so overly religious about it that we think of sin as something that is only outwardly demonic, outwardly grotesque, or really, 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 really bad. And one of the reasons that sin has so much power, so much influence in the world, is precisely because it typically doesn't show up that way. In fact, most of the sins that hold us back from realizing our full potential are socially acceptable ones. There are lots of things that we do on a daily basis that are anti-self, things that are self-negating, self-destructive, things that are harmful to others, but they're socially acceptable to do. No one's going to make fun of you for doing these things, but they hold you back from living your best life. And in fact, there may be people in your life who might see you do something that you know in your conscience that you probably shouldn't do. And if they heard you say, you know, I shouldn't have done that, they would probably encourage you and be like, oh, that's not a big deal. But you know, you know what your goals are. You know what your purpose is. You know that there are certain things, standards, so to speak, that you need to hold yourself accountable to, even if the even if the other people in your life don't need to hold yourself accountable to those same standards, because you know where you're going and you know that what it means for you to miss the mark might differ from what it means for someone else to miss the mark. Now, so that kind of moves us in the direction of the biggest lie. One of the lies about sin is that it's this thing that's like outwardly grotesque and obviously demonic when in reality, most of the sins that hold us back are socially acceptable. But here's the most powerful lie. The most powerful lie is that the main reason you don't do wrong, the main reason you don't yield to temptation is because you'll get in trouble or because it's a really bad thing or it's because someone will get mad at you or you'll be punished somehow. But actually, the main reason that you don't yield to temptation is much more self-interested than that. Morality is not some list of do's and don'ts without a point of reference. It's not something that you do because there's an authority figure in your life who's going to put you in detention or ground you if you don't do it. And unfortunately, so many people have been taught to reason about morality in that way. They've been conditioned to think about right and wrong, primarily in terms of what pleases or displeases authority figures, what gets us in trouble, what avoids trouble, and that's the least productive way to go about it. Because for starters, the people in your life that have authority are not going to have it forever. You will eventually find yourself in places and spaces or at ages and stages where you can do more of what you want without accountability to people who right now might have the power to speak into your life authoritatively. So what then? Does your morality change when that happens? No, it's much bigger than that. It's about recognizing that your life has value. It's about recognizing that you have potential. It's about recognizing that you are capable of more good than what you are able to demonstrate right now. 
that you have something within you called potential and you have the power to choose a lifestyle that enables you to actualize that potential so that you can create more wealth for yourself and others. And by wealth, no, I do not just mean money, but I also don't mean something that is so snobbish that it excludes money. We should not worship money, but we should also not idolize money in the opposite direction by demonizing it and making it something that we can't possibly ever make or ever share or ever use as a positive tool. But we are here to create wealth for ourselves and for others. We are here to live freely at an individual level and to help model for others the value of freedom, the beauty of freedom, the meaning of freedom. And we all have things in our lives Distractions, self-defeating beliefs, obstacles, temptations that can cause us to compromise our potential. And when we yield to temptation, we choose to be governed by an inferior version of ourselves. But when we overcome temptation, when we engage in the battle for our own souls, we become powerful people who are not only free to do whatever we want, but who actually have the self-control and the discipline to do what is best. There's this really awesome verse in the Bible that I love that says all things are permissible, but not all things are profitable. You know, I can give you 20 possibilities for things that you could do today and it all be fair game, but not every one of those things is gonna be profitable. Not every one of those things is gonna be beneficial. Not every one of those things is gonna be worth your time. But if you did them, no one would really have the right to criticize you and say that you're an evil person. However, if you do those things that are most beneficial, you get to become a superior version of yourself and know what it means to become a human being that is fully alive, to know what it means to become a human being that truly embraces the adventure of life rather than just being someone who allows your potential to go unactualized and who allows life to passively sail by you. The most powerful lie is that morality isn't about you that it isn't about your purpose, that it isn't about your destiny, that it isn't about your fulfillment, that it isn't about your inner peace, that it isn't about your personal freedom. And the truth of the matter is, it is. You can remove all the authority figures from the world. You can remove all the people who threaten you with punishment from the world. And the best reason for resisting temptation will still be intact because the real reason is I want to be free. And every time you resist temptation, you choose to make a step in the direction of your freedom. And that's a powerful thing. That's a powerful thing. It's exactly why the devil lies to us about it. Let's go to tweet number two. My three foundational assumptions. Number one, freedom is good. Number two, freedom is more painful than the alternatives. Number three, freedom is better than the alternatives. Let's go down all three. Number one, freedom is good. Well, how do you know that freedom is good, TK? Well, my question to you would be, well, what is good? You tell me what you think is good. I don't care what it is. It can be a bag of potato chips. It can be loving your neighbor as yourself. It can be doing things that you enjoy. Whatever you think is good, that goodness depends on the capacity to choose it. Because without the capacity to choose, there can be no such thing as responsibility or moral culpability. Whenever we criticize people and say, you know what, you should have done this, or next time I want you to do that, or here's a way that you can do it better. We're presupposing that people have the power to choose. Whenever you tell someone, hey, I don't like the fact that you use your money for this. You should use more of your money for charity. Whether you're right or wrong, you are presupposing that that person has the capacity to reason clearly about what you are saying and then make a different choice than the one they made the first time. Whenever you argue for some path as being a virtuous path, whenever you argue for some approach as being the way of integrity, whenever you give advice to people about what they should do, whenever you criticize people for doing something bad, whenever you say someone ought to be held accountable or punished, or someone ought to be praised for that, encouraged to do more of it, you are presupposing that they have the capacity to choose. You take that away, you take away virtue and vice. You make us all a bunch of slaves or a bunch of robots who simply do what we are programmed to do or what we are coerced to do. Freedom is something that we never get away for the sake of some, that we never give away for the sake of some greater good. Freedom is the ultimate good 
upon which all other goods depend. Yes, I believe in a life of faith, hope, and love, but without the capacity to choose it, it's not faith. It's not hope. It's not love. Faith isn't faith unless I choose to cooperate, unless I choose that as a path. Love isn't love unless I have the ability to choose to give it away. Hope isn't hope unless I have the capacity to reject the alternative of despair. Everything that is good depends on us having freedom. So freedom is not merely a good. It is that good upon which all other goods depend. Number two, freedom is more painful than the alternatives. The thing about freedom is that it demands self-ownership. It demands personal responsibility. It demands agency. It demands accountability. And freedom puts you in a position where you can actually be criticized. You see, if I don't choose what I do, if I'm just a victim and someone else makes choices for me, then I can't be held responsible for the outcomes produced by my life. I can't be held responsible for the things that go wrong. I can't be criticized for the approach that I take. Freedom is very painful. You know, when we're young and we have a lot of people in our lives that tell us what to do and it seems like they can push us and pull us around, we crave that freedom. You know, your parents give you a curfew and you say, well, I want to be able to come in whenever I want. I can't wait to be free. Well, that means you've got to have your own place of living. And that means you've got to go out there and get a job. And that means you've got to do like your parents and figure out how you're going to answer the very difficult question of making a living, which means you have to develop some skills, which, me which means you have to think about those skills in terms of how they can solve problems and create value for other people so that those people want to pay you, which means you got to figure out how to get along with them, how to win their trust, how to be. Account these things are hard, very hard. They come with these rewarding possibilities. But in order to get to those rewarding possibilities, you've got to make sacrifice after sacrifice before you can even get there. Freedom is more painful than the alternatives. And the reason we have to fight for freedom is because there will always be people who promise us free goodies, who will promise us a life of ease, who will promise us security and easy answers if we only give up our freedom. And if we stop there, most people would because it truly is possible to give up your freedom in exchange for security and easy answers. But that brings us to number three, freedom is better than the alternatives. Freedom brings responsibility. It brings pain. It makes demands on us. It's the cause of great suffering. Without freedom, perhaps we wouldn't have all these debates about all of the complexities of life. Perhaps we could make everything so simple, but you know, I don't want simplicity if it leads to slavery because the most beautiful, dignified aspect of our humanity is our capacity to engage in creative expression, our capacity to look at the world and say, I will not merely accept it as it is, but I will, but I will make it what it is not yet. I will imagine something different and I will bring forth what I can imagine through my labor, through my effort, through my ability to create and collaborate. And without freedom, you can't have that. No matter what problems you can solve by taking away freedom, when you do that, you eliminate the very meaning and purpose of life that makes problems worth worrying about in the first place. What is a problem? A problem is an obstacle or a burden that gets in the way of a goal. Problems define, derive their meaning from the fact that we have goals. If you take away our goals in order to solve problems, well, you've eliminated the very reason for worrying about problems in the first place. Never take away freedom. Freedom is the goal. Freedom is the beginning and end of life. Without freedom, we have nothing else to live for because you can't live for something if you never had the capacity to choose it in the first place. That, my friend, gets to the heart of the devil's most powerful lie. I appreciate you listening. I never take having an audience for granted. Thanks for tuning in. If you're listening on the podcast, please be sure to leave a comment. Please be sure to rate the podcast and subscribe. If you're listening on YouTube, Please be sure to share a comment about something you'd love to hear me talk about in the future or additional commentary that you might have. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And don't hesitate to share this with a family member or friend that might benefit from hearing these sessions. All right, everybody, keep living freely and keep modeling for others how to do the same. Peace.